So we have been asked, as you all know, it's our brand new YouTube channel and we've been asked by our lovely friend Faye Bedford um, if we would do a little chat about mental health. I mean, you've only recently really been experiencing. Yeah, I was, for me, it's been the last couple of years. It's not, it's not, an, it's not been a long term thing for me. But it's quite interesting, I think, like, to, to talk to you about your experience especially coming from someone like me so like mental health wise a bit of background about me I've struggled with mental health my entire life but what age would you say that it became apparent I'd probably say about six really yeah yeah that early that early I remember being six years old and having massive massive anxiety because I got taught I got told in school this story mm. and I just remember it being called drip drop black blood. <laughs> Is that a bit like a white Nancy story where you look in the mirror? Yeah but what it was was that I was in my room in the night mm. and I got woke up to the sound of dripping and when I went into the bathroom I pulled back the shower curtain and my dog was hung upside down with its head cut off and the dripping was the blood and that was a story that somebody in school when yeah, I was as, six, as children do yeah yeah told this drip drop black blood story that's a frightening story to tell a six yeah, yeah. Though, isn't it and I remember going home and honestly for years and years it plagued me and I would sit there at night listening and if I heard any sort of drip and then that was like where it all but then I began. think it wasn't known then when you were six that you were on the autistic spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hearing that now, you can see those traits of what, like the yeah. overthinking and the obsessing yeah, over yeah, a yeah. certain thing. I just thought I was a normal yeah, kid. Yeah. I just thought every other kid experienced this. Does this. <laughs> I got obsessed that I was going to get pregnant off the toilet seat. So like when I was nine years old, so like I was literally anxious from. And it was mainly health anxiety. Which still to this day, and yeah. I think of them, it still happens. Not not as bad as it probably No, has it's been. a lot less irrational now I'm older. And, and yeah, you can reason with yourself and you have it more under Yeah, control. yeah, yeah. But mate, I swear to God. Right. Like, and then when I got older, and, and I just wanted everybody to like me, so I would constantly be anxious, so anxious. And like my mum and dad took me to see somebody. You mean like a doctor or a Yeah, yeah, when I was yeah, when I was young, they took me to um Pendlebury Children's Hospital. And and apparently my mum and dad were just told that she's just got an active imagination. That was what they kept being fobbed off with. Yeah, which you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I but then for years and years I kept saying to people they kept referring to councils and I was like, I'm not being funny, but I know that I've got an anxiety disorder, yeah. but it's more like what some like one in three people have got an anxiety disorder. Uh, since actually me being diagnosed, yeah. I've seen way more people than I ever have, like saying, oh, I've got that, or yeah, I, yeah. I've been diagnosed with X, Y, Z. I didn't really know much about it until no. obviously being friends with you and then two years ago me being ill and then subsequently struggling with my mental health from that yeah yeah but i can quite believe that figure of what is it one in three one in, i'm sure yeah, it's one it's, in three as i i have anxiety or depression or a combination, or a combination yeah but they say that every single person at some point in their lives mm -hmm. will go through mental health problems uh, yeah uh, well i i'm such as like a strong will strong minded person yeah. and I would never in a million years have thought that I would suffer with my mental health like I have done. Yeah. I What's thought different and it and it sounds silly but I used to think, no oh, I'm better than that. That that won't beat me. That, that, yeah. I, I'm in control of my brain. You know <laughs> wrong with it. obviously I knew you um before you got ill and and you would openly say to me, like, I've never suffered from any sort of mental health. No, no, I, I couldn't relate. Whilst I could listen and, and comfort empathize. you and empathise with you, I couldn't ever use anything from experience. Like, yeah, yeah, I couldn't yeah. say, well, I felt a bit like this and this is what I did to, to sort of get myself out of it. Yeah. I didn't have anything. I couldn't, no. I can't, I couldn't have, at that point, helped anybody. 
think from being ill two years ago. Um, is that your turning point, do you think? 100%. Like, but, but was it gradual, right? Or was it literally just like, like you woke up from your operation and um, boom, it was there? No, I would say it was almost instant from the moment I was diagnosed. Right, okay, yeah. So, so between diagnosis from cancer to surgery was less than two weeks. Yeah, because it was like it was the Tuesday, yeah. and then the week on Friday, yeah. you were. Um, when I went in for my sure. diagnosis, which came completely oh, no, out of the, the blue. On Monday, sorry, I think. Yeah, it came completely out of the blue. I, I thought I was going in to have some more good news because we'll do another video on why I was poorly, but I had cancer. I was having IVF. Cancer got in the way of that. I actually thought I was I was getting some sort of good news, and and I was one step further. You know, one step closer to my I dream, did. but we all did because I had no symptoms or anything. So I think the minute that doctor sat me down and went, actually, I don't have very good news, it's cancer. Christ, I couldn't even Instant. Cope. Right, obviously, I went through all the emotions. I was hysterical, couldn't speak to people, couldn't look at anyone. I was just, I just went in myself. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Like, a, Whilst it was my way of dealing with it at the time, I just text Joe. I couldn't get words out. I could not speak to say, this is what's happened. So from that moment, my, my mindset completely changed. I was then rubbish. I was useless. I, I, nobody wants me. Nobody's going to want me now because I can't do what, you know, the majority of women kind of want to do. Um... And then it was kind of like I just worked on sort of autopilot to get me through to surgery. But I can honestly say from the minute I woke up from surgery, I was a different person. I'm not, I'm still now not the person I was, even in the beginning of the treatment, trying to make me cry. I think that you've, you've, I wouldn't say that you have got better, but I'd say that you seem to have accepted now. A lot yeah. more this is yeah. what's happened yeah. moving forward and this is my life now yeah. and i'm gonna have to accept it so i i had surgery in the july july the 17th yeah i had surgery in the july and it took me obviously i suffered instantly from the, the operation but it took me to the september to actually say i feel like i'm losing the plot i am going to do something silly like trigger warnings i'll put it on yeah, the video and put warning. it in the group anyway i i Honestly, we've done something. For me, as an outsider looking in, I think the difficult thing for you was the fact that you've always been a very self-sufficient, independent person. Oh yeah, I rely on nobody. And unfortunately, because all this happened and your brain was going off on one, and then your body was completely changing. My body's changed and completely given up on me. I think now you it, you finding it hard because you still want to make sure everyone else is all right. Yeah. Or, or I'd, I'd be the one going, no, I'll pick that up. I'll carry that. No, it's fine. I can carry that. But, but actually, I can't carry it. And, and it took me a long time to say, like now I will say, mate, will you carry that, please? Because I can, I'll get the door or I'll hold the drink. And that's fine. But please, can you carry this bag? Because it's, I can't do it. I bet a lot of people, you know, are watching this and can relate to Definitely, this. yeah. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with how anything that we have said today, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with those kind of feelings. It is completely normal. It's valid. You should it's, allow it's, those yeah, feelings yeah. now. And it, it took me a long time to accept that that was okay to feel that way. Because I'd gone through spells. I couldn't speak to people, even like, like after the operation. People, even my own mum. My, my, and I say this to you, like my mum would be on the phone, and I honestly don't know what she was saying to me because my, my, my brain won't listen. It's like it won't take in any information. It's just like it's just white noise to me. And then I feel then I feel worse after the phone call because then I feel like oh, I, I can really speak very nicely to them. Not that I'm horrible, but I didn't make conversation or I probably didn't listen to anything she just told me or respond in the way she thought I would. But it's one of those, but, but now I just have to accept that that's how my brain works. My body doesn't work like it used to, and I'm okay with that. Like, I'm, I'm okay that I can't run up the stairs anymore. 
and that I have to say guys that I'm, I'm in a lot of pain now I need to stop and let someone else take over whereas before because I'm so consumed with checking everything and making sure everybody else is all right you're very like motherly I and am, lucky I after, am, aren't I you? am and, and that's with with family friends all of the animals I have to make sure they're okay like it's a, do you know what? It sounds bad because it's such a nice trait, but it is to your detriment. Oh, yeah, because, because I, put, I put me at the bottom. Yeah, you put you at the bottom when you really, you should be right there at the top. And I, I don't say think I will you. ever put myself. I'm nearer to the top. Yeah, you, you're better now at, at sitting back and saying, I can't do I can't this. I can't do this. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Or, or you know, if we do this today, I can't do that tomorrow that's what you've got you've got to you know because nobody else can do no. it and also it's for me it's about being honest and speaking out about it because if i don't tell you you're just going to keep saying can we do this and can we do that not just you and I know, anybody anyone. can we go here can we do that and then i'm just i'm just making it worse for myself by going along with it yeah and yeah. i'd rather just say no my body's done for but I think days. everyone would rather that you said yeah. that rather than went along with it and then knackered yourself or weren't happy yeah. about it like afterwards. Like I, I, I know 100% that I am the mother hen. Like I, <laughs> we laugh about it, but even for Joe, Joe, like I can't regulate my body temperature because of surgery. Joe gets hot and bothered stressed out anyway and then when she's hot it's even worse and her anxiety's through the roof like she always like about going here and i'm gonna put this hoodie on and i'll turn around and go you will not you'll put a t-shirt on because i know what's going to happen you're going to get too hot and then you're going to whinge and, and it sounds like i'm being really bossy but it's not but, well, i suppose i am a little but it's because i care that i don't want her to then get herself in a pickle because she's too hot because she's stupid to put a hoodie on yeah but it's right to make yeah. sure that that you're all right because if you're all right it's actually and i always say this is sometimes i feel selfish for doing some of the things i do but it's one to help you and two it yeah. actually helps me because by solving the situation before it's happened i then don't have to deal with the, the chaos of when right. it's when it's gone wrong or something's happened yeah 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 so i'm always sort of thinking well what does that per how is this going to make that per person feel or what do they need if we're going to do this will they be okay but you should you should be going in some situations though and saying i know you do you should be going in some situations and saying what makes me okay i know you know i know but i think it's so hard for people like to give up control of something especially when you've been a certain way your whole life Imagine yeah. like you with like your washing pots, like she won't let anybody else wash your pots. Don't touch my pots, don't touch my things, don't try and clean for me because you won't do it the way I want you to do it, even though I know you're trying to help me. It's difficult, it's very, very hard. And I, whilst I, sorry I didn't mean to kick you there, whilst I hold my hands up when I'm struggling, mentally or physically, I still can't can't let go of that control because no. that to me is something i'm clinging on to if i can at least clean the way i want it cleaning i'm winning at life like don't touch my dishes because you'll put them in the you put them the wrong way or you won't clean it properly or it, it again it's me being selfish because i'm just avoiding a situation because i won't be able to sit and watch somebody do it yeah it will it will, it will raise my anxiety watching you do it yeah for yeah me. yeah than me just struggle to do it myself. It's one of them. But, but, but you're a bit like that. You, I am. The, there's things that you like to do yourself. Oh, like, No, no, I'll do it. Yeah, no, I can't. I hate, I hate other people doing stuff. But you are you are quite good at saying, can you do that? Because that's going to wind me up. Yeah, well, I never used to be, no. though. This is the thing, like, like, obviously, you've known me when I've been older. Yeah, yeah. So you, you've, you've not seen me learning like how to do all these mm. things and i've known you whilst you've had diagnoses or you've been in the pipeline yeah 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 you, you've like not I've, known me when i've just been at a complete loose end yeah well you've probably just been classed as being like an unreasonable child well they because told, they don't yeah. really know why what's happening 
they told me like they diagnosed me with all sorts over the years and, and nothing ever like rung true. Oh, this is oh, I just started messing them out. No, <laughs> okay. And nothing ever really like everything they would say to me, I was like, but I'm not like that. Like I don't really get angry. No. Don't really like I, I, I'm not I'm not like that. Do you know what I mean? No. Like I don't harbour anger or grudges or nothing like that. I don't know, it's just I just think that like if you are struggling with something and I know it's easy for me to say now, but it's taken a long time to get to the yeah. point. And whereas now I will just say, whereas I just used to go along with it, so like I can't stand drinking out of glasses, for example. Um, but I would just go along with it because I didn't want people to think I was a weirdo. Or being difficult. Or being difficult. Yeah. So my whole life, I've just gone along with all this stuff, but been so anxious inside like that, no one's ever even believed. Because I'm like, I'm going to have to go here and I'm going to have to do this, or I'm going to have to do yeah. that. Because I, I, say, I say to Joe quite often, I would rather you said to me, I can't drink out of glasses. Time for a chocolate break, thanks Belinda. Um... I'd rather you said to me, like, I, I can't deal with drinking out of a glass, mm. or I can't do that, or I don't ever buy me pyjamas that are made out of this fabric because I can't cope. I would much rather you said that, because I don't want to do something to trigger those feelings, because I would then feel bad because I've triggered that. No, but I always know it's not you, it's me. No, but for the other person, if they actually give a shit, it would upset me that I'd done something to to get you in a bit of a flap because mm. I, I don't want that I, 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 believe me it's hard work for me when she's in a flap so if we could avoid it we avoid it well they diagnosed me with BPD and they said I really don't think this is what I've got and I, I feel mean, there was instead. small elements of it but not like 100% this, yeah. is what, this is you but the main like traits of BPD like things like sexual promiscuity yeah um and and like i think there's a big overlap between bpd and autism well there is and i think especially yeah, it's hard for women as well yeah because it's like hormonal as well yeah like yeah how women react to things at certain times yeah it could be mistaken for they always said oh well i say always i only had that diagnosis for about for about a year and a half before they started saying now we don't think that is it mm. and then passed me on to learning disabilities as opposed to mental health um but even though autism is a learning disability it comes with so many other mental health problems mm. that i mean we will do a whole um video That's about so much that we could talk about but in regards to mental health, I think the moral of the story for both of us is, is that the best thing that you've got to do is talk. Talk and say, I don't feel okay. And it's okay to not feel okay. It's it's not a it's, it is a big deal. But But saying it but, isn't. But saying it it's not a big deal. You're not on your own. It's one in three people. It's hard because like if you've got a if you've got a cut on your finger you go to the doctors don't you well or whatever and you say like i've got to cut my finger and they put a plaster on it for you mm. but when it's something invisible and i'm sure it applies to other invisible illnesses not just mental health it's like it it, it feels like it's got a much bigger stigma yeah even though it's just your brain i think because hurt. it's not physically presenting itself like you say, a cut, I can visibly see the cut. Yeah, yeah. Anything mental or invisible illness like fibro, MS, which again is what they think I have, it's me telling somebody, you almost feel like a bit of a fraud because I can't prove it, can I? I can... Whilst I can say I feel mm -hmm. like this, it's hard. But it's okay to feel like that. And you, you know. need to allow yourself and. and... Don't get too hard on yourself. I spent years and years beating myself up. But I feel like you have to surround yourself also. Not necessarily surround because I'm not a big beat. I, I, I don't like being overcrowded. Like, surround yourself with the right kind of people. Yeah. Because again, mother hen instinct for Joe, with me, with Joe, is people manipulated Joe in the past because of her, her nature and her need to be liked. Yeah. 
not the cat. Don't, 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 don't. They're, they're not the people. Like, the people that eat shop people. You need a good circle of friends around you, when, especially when you've got a mental health problem. Like, yeah. You need to be able to speak about it and not be judged not feel any differently within that friendship once you've aired whatever you want to say. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I can say all kinds of stuff, but I know that Joe won't look at me. Like, it's, it's normal. We need to take that stigma away from mental health. Like, like Joe said in the beginning, I'm pretty sure all of us at some part of our lives will have a moment, whether it be a small one or, you know, a long one, of some sort of depression, anxiety, OCD, it's, it's okay. I think the easiest thing to do is just, you know, as hard as you find it, just talk about it. Even if it's somebody completely impartial, you don't even have to talk about it to like your friends and your family. Mm. Even if you just have one person you send a voice note to every now and then to just kind of offload I'm a much How better feeling? texter about my problem than I am face to face because I get way too emotional about the things that trigger me because it's not just sort of everyday life triggers. It's, it's I think it, it goes much deeper than that. So I'm much better to talk about it via text because, yeah. again, I, I don't want people worrying about me that I'm upset. And by text, you don't know if I'm crying. And it's silly, it's, it's, but it's how I deal with it. And the fact that I'm doing that by text is a massive thing for me because I'm actually admitting there is something wrong rather than just sucking it up and dealing yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nobody knows. Because even now, I go, how do you just carry on, Natalie? Even you, like, oh, you, you, you know, you do so much and nobody would ever know because we're not, we're not quitters. But, whilst we might have our problems i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that are worse off than us and if i let these things beat me same for joe you know might as well give up we're not giving we're not giving up and nobody should give up no. because do you know what there is help out there and if yeah. you can find it in yourself to reach inside yourself and say do you know what I'm going to talk about this today, yeah. even if, like Nat said, if it's on text, mm -hmm. if it's to a stranger on, like, the Samaritan's phone line, mm -hmm. it could be in the Topsy Curvy group, anywhere. Yeah. If you feel that you need an outlet to vent, it doesn't, you don't have to ring your mum up, you don't have to ring your best mate up, you don't have to tell your husband, you know, yeah. there's, there is help out there in every single way, mm -hmm. shape or form that you will need. And it's okay to say, I need help. And that is the best thing you can do. Like, it to is. say, I need help. So, that is us. And there is a lot more that we can talk about. But we don't want to um, over bombard you at this, at, yes. on like our first like talking video sort of thing. But we will be doing a weekly video. So if there is something you want to know about, if you want us to um, discuss more things we've talked about today, yeah, yeah. that's fine. We'll just give you a brief overview. Yeah, we could do a video like, you know, on going into depth more with Jo about her autism and her quirks and ways and things that she likes and the things that probably were a, a flag, a, a warning flag as a child, but it yeah, wasn't, yeah. you know, like the doctors didn't, I can bring my diagnosis. We can I'm talk happy about, to bring my diagnosis and talk like, through it. We can, I'll happily, it might be emotional, but I will talk about, you know, the, the procedures I've had done and then the diagnosis and whatnot. People need to speak out about stuff. Yeah. Because I, for one, hadn't, I didn't have a clue about mental health, but I also because I didn't have symptoms, knew nothing about the cancer that I got, which I think probably didn't help either because it was just like, what on earth am I going to die? That's all I was thinking of. But yeah, so we, it, 
pop them in the comments if you ever want us to to do another video on a specific subject i mean you're getting them anyway wherever you ask for them not, but, but so. we like it if you ask for it it just makes it seem well like someone asked for this to be about mental yeah. health and we, what we will do so this is a brief overview but we will break it down over the next few weeks we'll break it down into the bpd we'll break down anxiety and what we've both been through anxiety wise we'll break down into depression, depression. We can talk about OCD and obsessions mm. because OCD isn't quite what it's painted as on no, the TV. No, it's not just washing your hands. No. <laughs> um, we can talk about autism. We can talk yeah. about cancer. We can talk about infertility. Anything. There's a lot of things that we can talk about, guys. Yeah. And we're happy to talk to you about them. More than happy. Yeah. Um, but just a brief overview, we are going to be doing about a half hour video once a week. So keep your suggestions coming in because we really appreciate it. Let us know if there's ever anything that you want us to talk about. But for the meantime, um, if you look down in the comments, we've put some handy links that you can look at like for the Samaritan's Mind, things like that. Please reach out. Yeah, do. It'll, it will be the best thing you can do. Don't, don't suffer on your own. No, no. It's not going to go away. No, and life is so much easier and the stress is alleviated once you you find the way that works for you to be able to unload and get it out. It actually helped for me, though. I just as a little byway here. For someone actually... I actually thought I was going crazy. I, I thought I'd lost my mind. For someone to just say, you have anxiety and depression. Yeah. That... that didn't sort my head out but it start it was the start of it leveling obviously yeah. medication um so yeah please speak out check out the links down down below and give us a thumbs up thumbs and up. Subscribe. subscribe bye guys bye